you're alive. The internet can totally see you to stop you your encoder. Right. Um, so I think this is going out live. Um, I need to open up a chat window just to make sure. Uh, what's this? Say hello to Super Chat. I don't know what that is. Don't really know whether I want Super Chat or not, but let's just go to my YouTube channel. So hello everybody if, uh, if, if you are watching this. And it's probably going to get recorded as well. Um, this is a completely unplanned thing that I've decided to try and do tonight, uh, which is a live stream of me playing Arkham Horror Living Card Game using a piece of software called OBS that I tried using uh, before and completely failed. So I, I don't know if this is going out or not. Uh, I need to try and find my stream to see where it is. Um, and again, I'm streaming it a different way. Normally when I do YouTube streaming, I create an event. And this time I just went into live streaming um, and decided to basically, uh, yeah, basically say press, you know, uh, start start streaming. Um, so I, I, I don't know if this is actually going out or not. Um, let's see if it is. Uh, and yeah, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the uh, the chat window up and I'm also trying to get a link. It says four people are watching. So hello, people that are watching. I don't know quite how you found it. Um, because yeah, I, I don't have a link to send. So and what I normally do is I normally get another computer going and I, and I put the link into that to get the chat window up. Um, I'm just going to click on enable to this super chat. I don't know what super chat is, um, but I really could do with a live chat window so people can tell me, uh, people can talk back to me. Um, let's have a look. Super chat. Oh no, it's a, it's a fancier version of chat. Uh, yeah, so if anybody's watching who is on the Gaming Rules Slack channel, then please let me know if you've got any experience with this how I actually get the chat window up. I've tried to go to my, uh, basically my YouTube channel. Yeah, maybe that, that's what I need to do. Go to my YouTube channel, your current live streams, live now, 10 people watching. Okay, right, um, let's have a look. So let's click on that and let's see if, yes, that's it. There you go. So if I now, I need to pop out the chat because I don't want to be watching me. Top chat, here we go. Um, so now there's here, Graham's here, bit blurry main video, yes, um, there's two reasons for that, uh, well the first reason, um, which is why I haven't, as I said, this, this is completely unplanned, I decided that I was going to sit down and play Arkham Horror tonight, and then I thought, why not try and live stream it, but the reason I've never done anything like this before, is because the quality of uh, my, I'm not on a fibre broadband connection, we can't get fibre broadband, so the quality of my upload is really is really bad, and I don't have the technical equipment really to to do proper live streaming. Um, so what I've got is I've got my uh, it's not quite my laptop camera. My laptop camera is there. I've got my webcam that I installed, which is on a tripod pointing to the here. So the quality is terrible and. At some point over the next few months, I do want to invest in some better equipment um, in order to be able to do this a bit more. But at the moment, you know, with the, with the with the slow upload speed, even if I buy extra equipment, it might not be uh, it still might not be very good. So I'm in the chat. If I say hello, people, uh, people are there. So yeah. So for those people that are watching. I'm basically going to play through Arkham Horror, the living card game. I'm going to play through the first scenario that comes with the core set, um, which is Knight of the Zealot. I'm going to put that there. I'm just going to switch to OBS to make sure I might switch between the chat. There you go. So I can now see what you're seeing. So there you go. So this is, uh, I wonder if it also focuses. Yeah, it does. Right. So Knight of the Zealot. This is what comes with the, with the basic starter set. I am all set up ready, although I need to move these here, okay, and I need to put, uh, this is the encounter deck, which I have put together quickly, so I'm just going to, just going to pile shuffle that up. Now, for those people that are watching this who have played the Arkham Horror Living Card game, uh, then none of this will come as a spoiler to you, and if I make any rules mistakes at all during the game, please point them out in the chat as I'm going. For those people who haven't 
played the Arkham Horror Living Card game, then there is a story element to the game. It's not like a, a legacy game, you know, like Pandemic Legacy or anything like that, where once you've seen this, you can't play it yourself because it's completely ruined. It's not that at all. There is, um, there is a story element to it, so certain bits of the story are going to get spoiled, but you can replay this scenario as many times as you want, and I, I personally don't believe it loses that much on subsequent plays. In some respects, it makes it slightly better in a way that you know a bit more about what's going to happen and you can therefore plan for it. Um, but anyway, so we're all set up. So I'm going to go through the basics and apologies if you know how to play. I'm not going to cover all of the rules because it's actually a very complicated game. Um, so Knight of the Z-Lot, 1925, Arkham, Massachusetts, uh, the end of an abnormally long hot summer, the first hints of autumn beckoned, blah, 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 basically, there's been a load of murders in town, and we've had a call from James Hankerson, uh, and he's found a dismembered body in town. So, I'm playing this game with two players, um, it's going to be me and Vicky, Vicky's not here, Vicky doesn't like playing games normally, so uh, it's me, I'm playing the character Skids O'Toole, who's, who's this guy, he's an ex-con, um, and Vicky's going to be playing Agnes Baker, okay? Now, you can play this game solo with one character. Personally, I don't like playing solo games with just one character. I always like to play two characters, um, because then you get a bit of interaction between, between the two characters. Unfortunately, I'm also good at forgetting things and making lots of mistakes, because running two characters, for me, is a little bit too much. So, um, yeah, and, and more on this, when I talk about solo gaming in my next podcast which is going to be recorded after UK Games Expo. So anyway, right, on with this. So what we've got is we have, uh, we each, each of us has a character card, each of us has a deck. Okay, now this deck, I've used the pre-constructed decks that come with the, with the game. But what you do is you shuffle your deck at the start of the game and you start with an opening hand of five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Let's have a look at what we've got. Because... If you draw, there, there, there's, there's two cards in the deck called weakness cards, and when they come out, bad stuff happens. If you get a weakness card in your opening hand, then you can basically reshuffle, you can do a mulligan. You're also allowed to do one mulligan during the game. Uh, and when you first start playing the game, you've no idea whether the cards are good or not. I have played it a couple of times, so I'm looking at my cards, and I'm going to decide that I am going to do a mulligan. Because there are so, I basically want... Uh, some kind of weapon or something like that, something that's going to give me a good bonus during the game. Um, so I'm going to do this. I just wish this game was more like Ashes, where you choose your opening hand of cards. I might try this once with a with a house rule to do that. So there we go. So we've drawn that. I've drawn the treachery card. Now I'm not sure exactly what I'm supposed to do at this point. I'm going to go to the chat so you can tell me I'm doing it wrong. Um, so I've drawn my, uh, my, my weakness card in my opening hand. I think I set that aside, draw a new card, and then shuffle that back into my deck. So that's what I'm going to do for, for Skidzo Tool. If that's not right, then please let me know. Uh, right, so that's that one. Now, on to Vicky. Vicky's playing Agnes Baker. One, two, three, four, five. What have we got? Uh, we don't have a weakness card. We've got some stuff we got there. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna do, do it again. I don't really know what's um, Keith saying in the chat that this is a bit of a tutorial scenario. It is in a way. I mean, I've played this scenario four times now. I think um, it's interesting because a lot of people think that that oh, it's a tutorial scenario. It's going to be dead easy and it's just going to be a walkthrough, right? I think this is a good scenario. It, it might be really easy. I, I'm not sure, but it. It does provide quite a bit of a challenge, uh, I feel, anyway. Um, it's not like, a, oh, let, let's take you through the rules one by one. Uh, discard and replace key. So I should have I should have discarded my whole hand, should I, and then, and then replaced. Um, anyway, we've done a mulligan with Agnes, and we do have what's called her signature card. Now, all the characters come with signature cards, and the heirloom of Hyperborea is, um, is Agnes's signature card. I, I, I assume that means it's pretty good. We'll see. Right, so we've got our hand of cards. Uh, each character also starts with five resources, and I've brought, this isn't my copy of the game, so thanks to Rick for lending me his game. He's got these fancy blinged-up resource tokens. Um, so these are these are the five resources that each character starts with. Um, we have an encounter deck, which is made up of various cards. 
and we have the act cards and the agenda cards. Sorry, the agenda cards and the act cards. Right? The agenda cards are bad, uh, and basically, um, if these advance, that's bad for us. These are the act cards, and we want them to advance. That is good for us. So there is a little bit of a story uh, on them, and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to read the story out. Basically, it's late at night. We're in our study. We're researching the murders. Um, we've been a few hours into the research, and we hear strange chanting sounds coming from the parlour down the hall. And we can hear dirt churning as if something were digging beneath the floor. And then you read the other part, which says, as you leap to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind only solid wall. So we are trapped inside our study. So what we do is we get the study card, which I had out and have misplaced somewhere. Where have I put the study card? Um, it was here. Maybe I accidentally shuffled it in to the encounter deck. Let's just have a quick look. Did I shuffle it in? No, it's probably right on the table in front of me. Is it there? No, is it there? No. Where's the study card gone? Have I dropped it on the floor? No, if somebody can see the study chart, study card, there it is. Right, so we are at the study. Um, oh, we're supposed to use little character cards. Bear with us a minute. I've forgotten the little character cards. Where are they? Here they are. Right, little character cards to mark. Because the players don't have to stay as a group. They can split up. And sometimes you want to do that and sometimes you don't. So who do we have? We have Skids O'Toole, who's in the study. And we have... Where is she? Here she is. Agnes Baker. Agnes is also in the study. Um, right, so when you go to a location for the first time, you're supposed to flip it over. So it's supposed to be this way up. There's a little padlock there. I don't know if you can see that. But basically... There's more flavour text on here, and unlike lots of other LCGs, where the flavour text is just, you don't need to read it, just get on with the game. In this game, the flavour text is actually telling the story as we go along. So it's really good. Basically, um, oh, I should have read this, I think, before those. I'm never really sure the order in which you're supposed to read these cards. Um, but yes, your desk is covered in newspaper articles. Anyway, so we're in the study, and you flip this card over... Uh, the door to your study has vanished. Right, so basically what do we have to do? Um, we are trying to advance this act deck here, and that's a good thing. And you'll notice here it says two with a little symbol. That means we need to put four clues on this card in order to advance it. How do we get the clues? Clues are normally found at locations, and the study coincidentally has two clues per character in the game. So again, Rick's blinged up tokens. There are four clues on the study, and we need to get four clues on this card in order to advance it. Um, so just, just want to check that the stream's going. I'm not hearing anybody in the chat, so if it is still going out, please let me know. I hope it's, I hope it's streaming. And apologies for the glare on the cards. I did try and take them out of the sleeves, uh, and it didn't help. It, they were still glaring. But again, as I say, I don't have... This is just in my dining room with the lighting, and I've got some extra lighting here. Um, so, yeah some point over the next year maybe i want to invest in uh some better equipment to do this to do this better but anyway let, let's get on with it so the game's played in a series of rounds the round sequence is printed here uh the first phase is the mythos phase but you skip the mythos phase in the first round of the game um i'm also transmitting on obs and the little box in the bottom corner is flitting between red and orange which basically means my upload speed's rubbish i think so um yeah, I assume it's still going out. Um, let's just check the Slack channel, see if anybody's... Yeah, looks like it's working. The YouTube stream is live. Super chat is so people can donate. Oh, okay, didn't know that. Right, anyway, so, round sequence. So, Mythos phase, we're skipping... I feel like Rado doing this. Uh, we're skipping the Mythos phase in round one, because that's what you do. So, in round two... Uh, sorry, in, in phase two is the investigation phase, and each investigator is going to take a turn. And we can do this in any order... Uh, we want. Let's just put that over here. So, um, and yeah, I, obviously I'm quite nervous doing a live stream, so I'm probably going to make crazy decisions. I don't know. But let's let's have a look at, and I'm probably going to play terribly. Um, now, now this is interesting. I said I was going to mulligan in order to draw a weapon, and I have drawn a weapon. Now, the thing with this game is... Um, you need to get your weapons out before you meet the monsters, because otherwise, if you try and get a weapon ready when you've already engaged with an enemy, the enemy gets an attack of opportunity on you, and that's bad. 
So it's always best to prepare first um, to get the weapon out. Let's just have a look at what else we've got. Oh, I've got a knife, and I've got two guns, and I've got a beat cop. And the beat cop's really good because he gives me plus one fight. So as soon as I get him out, him out, he's going to make everything better. So I think I'm going to play it slowly and set up. So Skid's O'Toole is going to go first. When it's your turn, you get three actions, uh, and there's a whole host of different things you can do as actions, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do as an action is I'm going to play the beat cop. Right, now, he goes four, so that's four resources spent. Now, I've only got one resource left, so that I'm going to have to get some more resources. Thankfully, you can use an action to take resources. Um, but what does the beat cop do? The beat cop gives me plus one fight, so my fight is now four. I'm basically stronger. He's also a, a mate who's following me around and he can take some damage for me. But you can only have one ally in play at any time. Uh, well, you can only have one with that slot icon. So anyway, we've got some other cards. Um, so I probably want to get my gun out as well. Really, really preparing. So I'm going to use my remaining two actions to take two resources. Right, and that's my go done. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to flip the card face down to show that you've had a go. I'm just going to go back to the chat and make sure uh, Susie's here. Hello Susie, thanks for watching. I don't know, have you played this game or not? Um, let us know and I'll find out in 20 seconds because I'm obviously on a time delay thing here. So it's now Agnes's go. Um, oh, each character has also got a special ability. Uh, I forgot about that. I'm going to have to remember that. Uh, Skids can basically spend resources to take extra actions. Agnes, ah, when she takes horror, I can put damage on enemies. And she's going to be taking a lot of horror from what I remember. Anyway, right, it's Agnes's go. So, uh, so Skids is basically setting up. He's not done any searching of the location. And, ooh, right, these, these are quite good. I've actually got scrying. Look at the top three cards. Ah, yeah, that's actually really good. But also, this heirloom is really good. Yeah, because after you play a spell card, draw a card. So, yeah, this is going to be great. So first action for Agnes is she's going to spend three, which is the cost of this card, to play the Heirloom of Hyperborea. So one, two, three. And every time now on she, drew, she plays a spell card, she draws a card. Um, so that's quite good. I think we're going to play a spell card. So yeah, let's play a spell card. So we're going to play Scrying, okay, which goes there. That costs one. Uh, and because it's a spell card, she draws a card. There we go. Um, now, scrying comes with three charges, so I think you put three of these little tokens on there and you use it three times uh, and then it's gone. And it's an action to use it, but we have one action left as Agnes. What are we going to do? Are we going to do some investigating? Because we're supposed to be getting these and we're not really doing that yet. Um, yeah, let's have a look at our investigation chance. So when you investigate, you make an investigation check. Uh, oh, Agnes isn't very good at investigating. She's basically, let's just go back to OBS so I can see what you're seeing. Um, her investigation skill, which is her intellect, is only two. That's not very good. Um, and when you do an investigate, you're basically comparing your intellect to the shroud value of the location. And the study has got a shroud value of two. So that's two versus two. Now, in this game, every time you do a skill check, you draw a token out of the bag. I've got a bigger bag for it because the one you gave me, I couldn't get my hand inside. Um, so you might think two versus two is okay, but actually, depending on what difficulty level you're playing, and I'm playing on the easy difficulty level, there's loads of negative tokens in that bag. So a friend of mine, Mark, told me, uh, basically, if you're ever doing a skill test, you, you want to try and get it so that you're at a plus two, because then if either the minus one or the minus two comes out, you're still okay. So basically, on a two versus two, I think, based on the difficulty level I'm playing, there's about a 50-50 chance that I'm able to do it. So I probably wouldn't do it unless I've got a way of boosting my skill, which actually I have. So Agnes, for her third action, is going to investigate. So it's two versus two. Now, every time you do a skill check, you can discard cards from your hand to give you a bonus. So basically, this game, is, it's got, it's got multi-use cards. You'll notice on the cards, there are icons on the left-hand side here. So what you've seen me do so far is playing cards onto the table by paying the cost, 
Now what I'm going to do is I am going to play a card. Well, it's not called playing a card. It's called, I'm going to commit this card to the test. And when you commit a card to a test, you ignore all of the other stuff on it, but you do add the icons here. Okay? So, yeah, the cards are basically sort of two uses. Except this is a skill card. And a skill card is only used when you commit it to a test. Uh, and this is perception, and you can only commit it to a test if the icons match. So, we are doing a, um, an intellect test, which is an investigation. It's two versus two. This gives me plus two icons, so we're now four versus two. Brilliant. So that goes to the discard pile. We draw a token out of the bag, which is kind of like rolling the dice. And we'll see what we get. We get... Ah, we got a cultist. Now, the cultists, um, there's usually one cultist token in the bag, and it does different things depending on the scenario that you're playing and the difficulty level that you're playing on. And the gathering, which is what I'm playing here, on, oh, that's hard and expert, right, easy side. Minus one, and if you fail, take one horror. So it's a minus one. We were four versus two. Minus one means we're three versus two. We have succeeded in the test. The token goes back in the bag. So we have succeeded. So Agnes gets one of the uh, magnifying glasses. And also, the perception card said, if you succeed, yeah, if this test is successful, draw a card. So she gets another card. Ah, she's drawn her weakness card. Uh, this didn't happen on Friday. We played it on Friday, three player. Well, three people played it and I was kind of teaching. The weakness card has never came up for two reasons. One, they, they just never came up. But also, you're supposed to put two in your deck and I only put one. Um, so it never actually happened on Friday and I can't actually remember what happens when a weakness card comes out. So let's go back to the chat and somebody might tell me. In the meantime, I'm going to get the rule book and have a look at... Oh, what happens when a weakness card comes out? I think you trigger it straight away. Um, but I do want to get this right. So this is a live video of Paul reading a rule book. Fantastic. Weakness cards. Uh, has an effect when drawn. Right, okay. So yeah, so when I've drawn the card, the investigator who drew the card must resolve its revelation ability immediately. Right? It doesn't have a revelation ability. Right, okay, uh, <laughs> right, so maybe, maybe I don't do anything. Um, the weakness cards are really cool, I think. It's just one of the parts of the game that uh, I really like, in that every card has, every character has got a weakness, and this, Dark Memory, this is actually uh, Agnes's signature card. So she has always got this in her deck, all the time. So Keith is saying, read the effect of the card, it triggers immediately. Yep, I thought so, but the rule book says, resolve its revelation effect immediately. But anyway, right, so, spell. Place one doom on the current agenda. Right, again, custom tokens. So these are the doom tokens, these little squiddy octopus Cthulhu thing. I think they're octopuses. So doom goes, now, doom added to the agenda is bad. When the agenda gets a number of doom tokens equal to this value here, which is three, uh, the agenda advances. And remember, we don't want the agenda to advance. Right. Uh, this effect can cause the current agenda to advance. Right. Forced. If dark memory is in your hand at the end of your turn, reveal it and take two horror. Oh. Well, that's not good, because it is currently Agnes's turn. Yeah, because she drew the card as a side effect of playing perception. So that hasn't worked at all, has it? So it is the end of Agnes's turn. If Dark Memory is in your hand at the end of your turn, reveal it and take two horror. Right, so she takes two horror. Now horror are these little brain things, so she takes two of them. She can take eight. Uh, once she's taken eight, she is eliminated from that scenario and she suffers a mental trauma for the next scenario. Now, I can't see any way of getting rid of this card apart from to play it because it is a spell and it does have a cost so I guess maybe next turn I need to play this from my hand for her to get over her dark memories. I guess that's how it works. We shall see. So both of my characters have taken, taken their turns. We now go to the enemy phase. The enemy phase only happens if there are enemies in play, which there are not. So now we do the upkeep phase. In the upkeep phase, the characters come back and 
Each investigator gets one card and one resource. So we'll draw a card and a resource for skids and a card and a resource for Agnes. Uh, each investigator checks hand size. You can basically keep eight cards in your hand. So round two, now we do the mythos phase. So this happens now at the start of every round. Um, place one doom on the agenda. So there is now two doom on this agenda. Uh, advance the agenda if doom threshold is satisfied, which is not, so we're okay. Next, each investigator draws one card from the top of the encounter deck. So, here's the encounter deck, uh, and I think this is done in player order, it is. Skids is the lead investigator, it's his house who we are at. So, let's draw a card and see what happens. Right, it's a swarm of rats. So, this is a creature. So, creatures spawn at the current location, unless it says otherwise. Um, and then, I think it engages immediately with Skid. So we put it in his threat area, and it is now engaged with him. Excuse me. Um, which is a good job that he played the beat cop, because now the beat cop can help fight off the rats. It's just a shame I didn't manage to get the gun out in time. But I think that's what happens when we do that. And now it's Agnes. So who'd have thought? Rats in the study. Right, Rotting Remains. So this is a revelation, so she must make a willpower test of difficulty 3. Now, this is awesome for Agnes because, uh, yes, I did, Keith, I drew a card and gained a resource for uh, in each investigator in the upkeep phase. Right, so Agnes has drawn Rotting Remains. It's a willpower test, and she's really awesome at willpower. She's got five willpower, so we're already at plus 2. Um, so because I'm at plus 2, I'm not going to... I'm not going to boost it by playing any cards. I, I could, but I don't want to. Um, so she needs to make a willpower test. So it's five versus three. Let's get the bag. What have we got? We got a minus one. So that's okay. We have passed the willpower test. And that card gets discarded. If we hadn't have done, we would have taken horror. Which actually would have been okay. Because every time she takes horror, she can deal damage to enemies at the location. Which would have killed off the rats. Never mind. Right. So <laughs> we kind of didn't want to succeed in that. We kind of wanted to take one horror. Um, but anyway, right. So that's that's the mythos phase done. So now we go to the investigator phase. Now, one important thing about the investigator phase is the characters can take their turns in any order. Last time we did Skids O'Toole first. We may want to do Agnes first this time. Because if we do, and we can do something that generates one horror for Agnes... Then, after one or more horror is placed on Agnes, deal one damage to an enemy at your location. And that would kill the swarm of rats without Skids having to do anything at all. So, let's do that. Let's see if... Um, well, we definitely want to get rid of this. This dark memory from our hand. And that is a spell. So let's do this first. So, Agnes is going to go first. Her first action is going to be to play this, which is her weakness card which costs two, so that's all of her resources gone. Um, and I think, it, I don't think it goes into play, I think it goes into her discard pile. I think, again, tell me if I'm wrong. But basically, this card would have dealt her two horror um, at the end of the turn, at the end of her turn, if it was in her hand. So, we've played it, we've got it out of the way. Now, what is she going to do? She's got no resources left. Doesn't mean she can't do anything, because there's lots of things here which can help her. Um, so she does have this scrying card, which is an action to use. So let's use it. Right, so exhaust scrying, right, and it's got three charges, so we spend a charge. Uh, look at the top three cards of any investigator's deck or the encounter deck and return them to the top of that deck in any order. Awesome. So we can look at this encounter deck and see what's coming up, and we can rearrange things, and that could be really important. Um, I'm going to... I have no idea. Um, let's do it on her own deck. There we go. So, one, two, three. Right, so we've drawn three cards. Uh, we've got one here that's quite... Oh, and that's quite nice as well to get into play. So, but I'm going to put that one first. I'm going to put that one, that one, and then that one. Right. Um, yeah, so that's that. So that's two actions used. What's she going to do as a third action? Okay, so I'm not sure she's going to be able to do anything that generates any horror. Do we want to investigate? We could investigate, and we have unexpected courage, which gives a plus two. 
Um, which would be quite nice. What's that card we just put on top of the deck? Uh, yeah, okay. I think we'll set up for next turn. So as her third action, she's going to draw a card. There we go. That's her turn done. So now it's Skids' is going. Now, Skids is engaged with an enemy. When you are engaged with an enemy, you have uh, limited things that you can do. Uh, if you fight or evade, then you're okay. But otherwise, anything you do, you actually suffer an attack of opportunity, um, which is bad. We don't, we don't want that to happen. So we could choose to fight. And I think, based on what I can see here, that's what we're going to do. The beat cop has an ability where I can discard him to deal a damage to an enemy at your location. Okay, that's good, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to discard the beat cop just to get rid of a swarm of rats. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose our first action is fight. Fight is a combat test, so we use uh, we use his combat ability, which is three, modified by one because of the beat cop. So we're actually four, and the fight value of the monster is one. So it's four versus one. So we're at plus three. So we should be okay. Let's have a look. What have we got? We got a zero. So we're done. So we deal one damage to the monster. It's always one damage unless you have a card that says otherwise. Uh, the, the swarm of rats, uh, the number in the middle is how many health they've got, which is one, so they're dead. Bang. We have two actions left. Now, we've drawn a guard dog. A guard dog is an ally. We've already got one ally in play, so we could discard the big cop to play the guard dog at some point in the future. Uh, I kind of want to get my gun out because I said I was going to do it before and I didn't. So let's, let's do it. Let's play it safe and let's get the gun out should we need it. So I'm going to play the 41 Derringer. Derringer. So that goes there. Uh, that costs three resources and it's got three ammo on it. So I think, again, I'm just going to put these on there. That represents the ammo. I'm going to go back to the chat in case anybody tells me I'm doing anything wrong. Nope, nobody has. So that's that. So first action was fight the rats. Second action was to play the Derringer. We're down to one resource again. Uh, his investigation skill is three as opposed to two, so so we've got a spare gun, which we don't need. We've got a dynamite blast, which is just total overkill um, at the moment. We don't need that. We've also got a knife, and you can have two hands worth of items. Um, the knife might be good, because every time we use the gun, we have to use an ammo. So yeah, I'm going to spend another one to play a knife. So we've got a knife in one hand and a gun in the other hand, and that is Skid's turn over. Enemy phase. Oh, we're supposed to flip that over. I might not bother with this. Um, enemy phase, there are no enemies, so they don't do anything, which is good. Upkeep phase, uh, both characters get a card. Uh, and they get a resource. So there we go, one resource, one resource, and that is the end of round two. So round three, one doom on the agenda. Bang, that is now three. So what happens is that doom clears and we flip this card over and we read the next bit of the story. Your house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed and the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It's almost as if you have been transported somewhere else entirely. Although every now and again, you recognize elements of your former home. Right, the lead investigator must decide either each investigator discards one card at random from her hand, his or her hand, or the lead investigator takes two horror. Now, discarding a card is not a problem. Discarding a card at random... Hmm. This, this really means that you've got to look at your cards and think, Am I really going to lose something important here? I don't really want to take the two horror, so I'm going to choose that. So each investigator discards one card at random from their hand. Right, okay, so let's shuffle this. And what has Skids lost? Skids has lost On the Lamb, which is his signature card. It's good, I haven't actually read that yet, so don't need to know what that does. Let's shuffle these. And we lose Rabbit's Foot. Okay, so we've lost the card. And now we are on the next part of the agenda, which is bad. Uh, the floor beneath you is giving way and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels, 
trying to find a way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do. And the next number is seven. So we've got quite a while before the agenda advances, but I suspect, and I actually know because I played the draw, um, that it's quite bad what happens next. So uh, what's next? We've advanced the agenda. It's now each player draws an encounter card. So uh, Skids O'Toole first. We have drawn a Ghoul Minion. So again, it's another enemy. Uh, so that engages uh, with him. And this is a bit tougher than the rats. Yeah, and it's got two health as well. So it's going to take us... Uh, we need to attack it twice, or we need to attack it with a weapon that does plus one damage. Um, right, so that's not good. And Agnes. A ravenous ghoul. It's even worse. Ah, now... This doesn't automatically engage her. It's got an ability called Prey, lowest remaining health. So instead of it automatically going for the player whose turn it is, it goes for the player with the lowest remaining health, which is still Agnes, because Agnes has got six and Skids has got eight. Right, this is not good. Um, so, I mean, I do like this game. I like this game a lot. I think it's a brilliant design. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And there's so many parts of this game that I love. One of the downsides of the game, and this is the same issue that I have with a lot of these games, uh, Lord of the Rings card game, legendary card game, just, in fact, most card games, is the order in which the cards come out here. You can win or lose this game, I think, based on, if you get unlucky, if the wrong things come out in the wrong order, you can be screwed. You can, you can get a really easy room. We've drawn two fairly tough monsters at the same time, and both my characters are now engaged. We could have just drawn rats and another not very good card, and we'd have been fine. So yes, it is a it, you know the game does have randomness. I mean, you're drawing a tile out of a bag as well. Um, but I think the game is fantastic. It, it tells a story, and the the rest of the mechanics I think really make up for it. Anyway, there you go. Quick review. Um, so we've drawn it. Right, it's the investigation phase. So what are we going to do? Right, well, luckily, Skids has got a gun and a knife and a beat cop. So hopefully, we're going to be okay. Now, let's have a look. Because you can evade monsters as well. And evading, it, the game's actually very tactical. Um, when you, if, you know, you don't always have to just fight them. Evading is a, is, a, is a tactic that you can do during the game. And when you evade a monster, it does certain things. And certainly, the game we played on Friday... The whole game hinged on David's character evading this monster at the right time because of what that did. So it isn't just a draw a monster and then fight it until it's killed. In this case, though, I don't think I'm going to try and evade the ghoul minion because I think I'm going to be able to... I think I'm going to be okay, actually. Because um, his fight skill is four because of the beat cop. So I'm already at four. And this is... Uh, it's got two. So I'm already at plus two. If I fight it with the knife, I get a, a plus one, so that would be five versus two. That's almost guaranteed success, but there are there are some bad tokens in here which are an automatic failure. But if I use the knife, what I want to do is I want to do something that gives me plus one damage. Because if I get plus one damage, that's two damage, and therefore it's killed in one action. Now I can get plus one damage by discarding the knife, but I don't want to discard it. If I fire the Derringer, then I get plus two, and if I succeed by two or more, this attack deals plus one damage. That, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to fight uh, by using one ammo from the Derringer. So I've got four, uh, three, four, I've got six. Six versus two, so I'm probably going to succeed. I want to succeed by two or more. So six versus two, we've drawn the cultist. What was the cultist? Minus one. Brilliant. So we have succeeded, and we succeeded by two or more, so the attack deals plus one damage, so the ghoul minion is dead. Bye bye, thank you very much. And that was only one action. Now, interestingly enough, he's still got two actions left. I could attack this ravenous ghoul here. Okay, so this maybe isn't as bad as I thought, because Skids managed to get tooled up beforehand. Because you can attack, although the ravenous ghoul is engaged with Agnes, it's at the same, I'm at the same location. Skids is at the same location as the girl, so I can attack it. Um, now, there is a rule that I forgot on Friday, which I read earlier on today, which is if I decide to attack that and I miss, then I think I deal damage to Agnes instead, which is very thematic. Um, I, yeah, I, I love the way that 
there's a lot of rules in this game and it is quite complex, but all of the rules make sense. I'm attacking a monster that's in a fight with somebody else. If I miss the monster, I'm probably going to hit my friend. So that's quite good. Um, scrolling the encounter deck at dire moments has saved our bacon. Yes, Keith. So I probably should have done that. I think looking at, because what I've just mentioned earlier on is that you, know, you can win or lose based on the order in which the encounter cards come out. So scrying to look through these cards and at least know what's coming. Yeah, I probably should have done that. If I'd have known the game better, I probably would have done that. And I might do that next time. Anyway, back to the Ravenous School. So Skids might just attack this Ravenous School. I could shoot it again. Let's do that. Let's shoot it again. So four, uh, three, four, five, six against three. So we're at plus three. So we're probably going to succeed, but I want to succeed by two or more to deal the damage. So this is where we might want to throw a card in. So I have a guard dog here. And as I mentioned earlier on, the guard dog is an ally. <clears throat> I'm going to have to get a glass of water in a minute, excuse me. Um, and I can only have one ally in play, and I've got the beat cop in play. So therefore, I could use the guard dog just to throw it away for the extra one fight, or I could discard the beat cop to deal one damage to... No. I mean, that costs four to play. I, I think I'm going to keep the beat cop around for quite a while. So yeah, so I am four, five... So three, four, five, and six versus three... But I'm going to discard, <clears throat> I'm going to commit the guard dog to the attack, which gives me the plus one I need. Now the other thing is that the other characters can help as well. So the, the active player can discard, sorry, commit as many cards as they want to the skill test. Every other character at that location, they can commit one card as well. So if I was really sure, Agnes could commit her unexpected courage and get an extra two. But actually, I think I'm okay. It's seven versus three. Let's see what we get. It is zero. So we have succeeded by four, which means we deal two damage. Two damage. Right. Now, Skid still has one action left. I don't want to use the gun again because I've only got one bullet and the gun's going to be good for doing extra damage. I think I'm just going to fight it with the knife. So I'm three, four, five. Five against three is plus two. That's fine because it's got... Three health, it's one more damage will kill it. We've drawn a minus one, absolutely fine. There you go, three damage, it's got three health. That ravenous ghoul is dead. So yes, there we go. Wasn't as bad as I thought. Skids is awesome. Uh, although he's only got one bullet left in his gun now. Um, right, so Skids has had his turn. Flip the card over. It's now Agnes's go. She's got three, oh, that should have come back at the end of the turn. Sorry, I forgot to, sorry, at the end of the round, that should have become unexhausted. Right, what do we have? Didn't I draw another spell? No, that's not a spell, that's an event. Is that a spell? No, that's not a spell. What's she going to do? Well, we need to be getting these tokens. This is what the whole thing's about, is, is getting these tokens. Because all, although we're not on a timer as such, well, we kind of are, because every round you put a token on here. But every round we're getting cards, these are bad cards. Every round we're getting bad cards from here. So, uh, let's have a look at what we can do. Okay, well, that's not going to help her. Ah, here we go. Oh, okay, Drawn to the Flame. So this is a good card, but it's a bad card. I draw the top card of the encounter deck, which is bad, but then discover two clues at your location. So I'm going to say it's worth it. So she's going to play this. It's an event card. It costs zero. Go to the discard pile. And she draws the top card of that. Right, Frozen in Fear, Revelation. Put Frozen in Fear into play into your threat area. So she's scared. And the first time that she performs one of the following actions in her turn, move, fight, or evade, it actually costs two actions. This is great for her because she's not going to do any of them this round. And she can make a willpower test at the end of her round to get rid of it. So this was really good. Uh, it could have been another ghoul, and that would have been bad. So, then discover two clues at your location. So, two clues at your location. Uh, right, so that's her first action. This is where I lose track when I'm playing solo games of how many actions I've had. Um, and then I come up with methods of how to track it. Like, oh, I'll put, I'll put three counters on a character, and I'll move them off to the side when I've spent them. And then I forget to do that. So, um, she's got two actions left. 
I really would like to get this, this last one off because then we can move all four of them onto there because this needs four and then we can advance the, um, the act deck, which is great. So she do, she's got one resource. She could do another investigate. Again, it's two versus two, but she has unexpected courage and that would almost guarantee it. So let's do, oh, I'll tell you what she could have done. Yeah, what she should have done is she should have done her scrying before she did the drawn to the flame because then she would have looked at the top three cards of the deck, put the one on top that she wanted, ready. You see, it's about combos and I didn't spot that. But anyway, she was lucky. She, she got that. Okay. So yeah, second action, we're going to investigate. We're going to use the unexpected courage. Um, Skids can't help out because he doesn't have the right cards. So that's four versus two. Let's see what we've got. We have a minus one, absolutely fine. So that fourth token goes on there. Now, I can't remember exactly when you move those tokens to there. I think, unless it says otherwise, you do it at any time. Here we go. Generally, the investigators can advance the act deck by spending, as a group, an appropriate number of clues. Uh, advancing the act this way does not cost us an action, does not cost an action, and can be done any time during an investigator's turn. If the card said objective, then it can't. It has to be done at a specific time. But we can do it now. So she's still got one action left. And let's spend those four. And let's advance the act deck. So we re flip it over. Loads of stuff to read. You notice that the edges of your newly purchased rug are tattered and mud-stained. Finding this odd, you shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug. To your surprise, you see the door leading out of your study. You slowly turn the knob and the door swings open, revealing your hallway below. You jump through the doorway, landing on your feet on soft dirt. The door to the study slams shut above you. Uh, the smell of burning wood fills the narrow hall, intermingled with the scent of rot and decay. Nice. Um, right, put, the, put into play the set-aside hallway, cellar, attic and parlour. So at the start of the scenario, the instructions told us to take these four cards and set them aside. And it's now telling us to put them in play. And any time you put a location in play, it goes in play with the padlock, uh, sorry, the lock side up. Discard each enemy in the study. Ah, so if there, if there were enemy, any enemies in the study, they would now be discarded. Place each investigator into the hallway. Okay, so we're in the hallway. And remove the study from the game. Okay, so the study has been removed from the game. So we are now in the hallway. Uh, so that's that card gone. The next thing to read is Act 2. Right, a glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlour. As you move towards it, intense heat forces you to back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss it at the barrier and watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Perhaps there's something in the cellar or attic that can help. Right, so this has an objective on it. I'll come on to that in a minute. And we need six clues on this to advance it. Now, quick note about the locations. We're in the hallway at the moment. I'm going to put the hallway here. We're in it. Uh, the locations all have an identifier in the top left and then there are identifiers in the bottom of the card that tell you which locations are adjacent to which other ones. So from the hallway we can go to the parlour, the cellar and the attic. Okay, But the parlour says the entrance to the parlour is blocked by a darkly glowing unfathomable barrier. Darkly glowing unfathomable barrier. You cannot move into the parlour so we're not allowed to move to the parlour yet. We can move to the cellar and we can move to the attic. So these are viable locations that we can move to from the hallway. But obviously because of reading the story, we're trying to find a way to get into the parlor because that's where this darkly glowing night is coming from. Um, right, now, uh, Agnes still has one action left. She could move, but she can't because moving is normally one action. But she's frozen in fear. And if you remember what I said earlier on, the first time she moves, fights or evades, it costs an extra action. So she can't do that. She has one action left. There's very little that she can actually do. So I'm going to be probably either drawing a card or taking a resource. I'm going to take a resource. Now it is the end of Agnes's turn. And the Frozen in Fear card has a forced ability on it. Forced means you have to do it. And in this case, we want to. 
At the end of your turn, test willpower three. If you succeed, discard this card. The willpower is five, so we don't want to boost it. Again, if we were playing on a more difficult setting, there would be minus threes in here. And at that point, you might want to boost it to three. But as it is, let's see what we get. It's almost as exciting as rolling dice. We've got a plus one. So there are pluses in this deck. Um, which means if you're really desperate, you can still do a test, even if you're one down, and you might succeed. There's like two plus ones in here, so very unlikely to happen. She's done it. That is discarded. That is the end of Agnes's turn. Uh, both characters are in the hallway. We're okay. So the enemy phase, there are no enemies. Again, we're doing well. We got rid of those two ghouls. Upkeep phase. Oh, she didn't use a scrying. That's what she could have done. That's what she could have done. And she probably should have done. Never mind. Upkeep phase. Um, yeah, so the characters flip back, reset cards, both get a card and a resource. One card and a resource. Uh, each investigator checks hand size. Right, and now because it's the end of round four, I need to go and get a glass of water because my throat is killing me. So, excuse me a minute, let's just go and get me a glass of water. Right, we're back with water. So, Keith, playing on hard, boosting by three is almost mandatory. Um, yeah, so yeah, as Keith said, based on the based on the mix of tiles in this bag, um, because I'm playing on the easy level, so I'm just sellotaping this cable back to the table because it's fallen off. Yeah, it's all high-tech stuff here with sellotape on tables. Um, yeah, the, the mix of the tokens in the bag on the easy level, I think there's two plus ones, three zeros, or two zeros, no, three zeros, three minus ones, and two minus twos, and then some extra fancy stuff. If you're playing on hard, it's three zeros, two minus ones, two minus twos, two minus threes, and minus four and minus five. So... I'm, I'm, I'm playing this game for the story. I don't want to have to play a scenario 10 times in order to succeed. I know it would be more of a challenge, but because I feel that the random element in this game, for me, is a little bit too high, I'm more than happy just to play on easy level, uh, which is still, a, is still a challenge. I'm still having to work things out. I mean, it's kind of like a puzzle. Um, and I'm enjoying the story and I'm enjoying playing through it. So yeah, uh, especially getting Vicky to play games having to play a scenario two or three times, it's like, no, we'll play it once. If we were close, we'll just call it a win. Um, we don't have enough time. So, right, anyway, round four, five, whatever it is, Mythos phase. So the agenda gets a Doom counter. Nothing's going to happen until it gets seven, so that's okay. Each investigator draws a card from the top of the deck. So, skids first, what have we got? We have Dissonant Voices. Put dissonant voices into play in your threat area. You cannot play assets or events. And at the end of the round, discard it. Right, so for this round, skids cannot play asset or events. And see what I mean about the randomness of this deck. This could have been a really, really tough ghoul. It's not. It's a card which is likely, at the moment, to have no effect on me whatsoever, which is great. Agnes, I guess you take the rough with this move. Um, obscuring Fog. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> it's not. It's a bad card. But what it does is you attach it to your location, and the attached location gets... I'll tell you what, I should have flipped this over. Really sorry. I should have flipped the hallway over when we entered it and read a bit of story. The walls of your house are splattered with mud, and your hardwood floor is gone, replaced with a dirt path. There are no clues at this location. And what Obscured by Fog does is it increases the shroud value of the location, making it harder to find clues. We had a really lucky draw that round. Two cards um, that are probably not going to do anything. Uh, Keith is saying that the Carcosa story is incredible. Now, I have actually played this game. I, I have played through the three scenarios that come with the core set, which is the Knight of the Zealot campaign. I have played through that once in its entirety myself. I've played this first scenario four times. I've played the second scenario twice, and I've played through the third scenario once. Um, Everybody has told me, Rick has told me, Mark has told me, that the stories in the other ones get better. I have no problem. That's, 
I have no I like the story in this. This this for me is it's scary, it's tense, this is so Arkham Horror. This is just really real. I should be playing this game with candles, really. Um, I am playing it in my dining room. The curtains are open and it's dark outside. So that's a little bit scary, especially if creatures start moving around. I mean, it is Columpton, so that does happen. Um, anyway, where was I? Quite tired, so I'm losing my train of thought. I'm rabbiting on about something. Yeah, so Keith's saying, Carcosa story is incredible, highly recommended. After this came the Dunwich Horror Legacy, whatever, um, which was the first their um, deluxe expansion set and then all of the scenarios after that and then after that was Carcosa. Rick's got them all. I borrowed the whole lot. I would love to have a week off work and just play through all of these but you know what my boss is like. Uh, doesn't give me any time off. Not even on bank holidays. Right, where are we? We've done that. We've done that. It's the investigation phase. So, Skids is probably going to go first or is he? I don't know. There's nothing for us to do here. We need to move to either the attic or the cellar. Uh, Rick's going to sneak round to my house and peek through the window. <laughs> if you had the time to come round, you should have come round and we could have played this together because that would have... Um, I'll touch on this more when I do my next podcast, but playing solo games, as I mentioned at the start, I lose track easily of what's going on. I love playing cooperative games with another player because I don't lose track of what's going on then. Um, anyway, losing track of what's going on. Yes. We're in the hallway, there's nothing we can do in the hallway. So we're gonna to have to move to either the attic or the cellar. Skids this turn cannot play any assets or events. And as I say, asset cards are these things he's got in front of him. So he probably doesn't need to. So where are we gonna go, attic or cellar? Now I would ask on the chat, but the people in the chat have already played this game before. Um, so, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this counter over and if it ends up that way up, uh, I'm going to the attic. I'm going to the attic. Right, so first action, Skids is going to move to the attic. So what you do is you move, take your character card and you put it here. And the first time you move to a location that's got the lock, the, the lock on it, you flip it over and let's see what we found. And this is the bit of the story which is a little bit of a spoiler. Because um, the first time I played it, I didn't know what was in the attic. And it was like, oh, what's in the attic? I was quite nervous and scared. Um, so yeah, if you are playing this and you want to avoid spoilers, then 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 don't look, basically. It's not that big a spoiler. Right, attic. Forced. After you enter the attic, take one horror. Because the bloody carcass of a malformed beast swings from a meat hook chained to the ceiling. Blood drains slowly from the carcass, dripping into a small barrel. Yeah, that's quite scary. So, uh, Skids takes a horror. Right, okay, so Skids has taken one horror. He's fine, he's got six, whatever it is, uh, so he can take six, and then he's fine. Uh, so that's that. Oh, and there's, there's four clues on this location. One, two, <clears throat> three, four. Now, remember, we need six clues to advance. And there's four in the attic. So we don't know how many are in the cellar. There might be two, which means we're going to need all of these and all of these. Um... To advance. So Skids is now in the attic. That's his second action. There's no monsters here, so he's absolutely fine. He could investigate as a third action, but he's. Ah, now this is good. The shroud value of the attic is one. His investigate, sorry, his intellect is three. So actually, yeah, so the shroud value here is really good. So he's going to investigate as his third action. He's going to investigate, and let's see what we draw. It's a minus two, so we're okay. Three minus two is still one. He gets a clue token. There we go. Now, I must remember that Skids' ability, I can discard two resources to take an extra action. So there's probably going to be a time when that's absolutely essential. Right. Agnes, what are we going to do? Three actions. Are we going to go into the attic with Skids, or are we just going to leave Skids on his own, down, uh, up in the attic, to carry on... Um, carry on investigating on his own. I think so. Um, well, the, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend an action to exhaust scrying and I'm going to take Keith's advice and I'm going to scry the encounter deck. So, 
Look at the top three cards and rearrange them in any order. Now, bearing in mind, we know that in the next Mythos phase, Skids is going to get to draw a card and then Agnes is going to get to draw a card. So, we have Icy Ghoul, which is really tough, and it spawns in the cellar. So we could put that on top, and it would spawn in the cellar, and if Agnes goes to the attic, and because it doesn't have the hunter keyword, it's going to stay in the cellar. We're probably going to have to go there and get rid of it, but that means we can do it on our terms whenever we want to. Right. We have a swarm of rats, which is not a problem at all, and we have a rotting remains, which is a good card for Agnes to get, because it requires a willpower test, and she's awesome at willpower. Now... You might think, oh, let's just put the Icy Ghoul third card down, but then we're going to get it eventually. So it's a case of, unless we scry again, but eventually we are going to get it. So I think I'm going to put the Icy Ghoul on top and the Rotting Remains second. There we go. So that's her first action. The second action is she's going to move to the attic. And when she enters the attic, she takes one horror. Oh, that's not so good, because... Yeah, she's got an ability that when she takes horror, we can do something, we can deal damage to a monster. There is no da there is no monster, so she takes a horror, but it doesn't it doesn't do anything. I should put these on here, really. So she's now she's now taken three horror. She's a bit scared, but she does have eight. She's able to take eight, so that's quite good. Um, right, what else have we got? So she scried, she'd moved, so she'll now investigate. Now, her investigate is not very good. Uh, she's only got a two intellect. What have we got here? This gives her extra willpower and agility, which we don't need. This automatically evades all enemies, but it costs five. Wow. Unexpected courage. In fact, do we want to be investigating? Why don't we just let Skids do the investigating and Agnes can do other stuff? Yeah, let's draw some more cards. Um, because she might get another spell, and every time she plays a spell, she draws a card, I think, because of, yeah, because of her heirloom of Hyperborea. Every time she plays a spell, she draws a card. So, yeah, third action, she's going to draw a card. Ah, Holy Rosary. Holy Rosary, Batman. Um, ah, now the problem with this is it's a necklace, and she's already wearing a necklace. Basically, there are item slots, and you can't have two items with the same slot, unless it's hands, because you've got two hands. So, if she was to play the Holy Rosary, it would replace the Heirloom of Hyperborea. Which might not be bad. We'll see. We'll see. Is that They both spent three actions. Right. What's next? Enemy phase. Again, no enemies. We are awesome. Right. Reset actions. Okay. Unexhaust cards. Everybody gets a card. So, oh, that's a nice one. And uh, what we got here? Okay, right. And then they both get a resource. And that is the end of the round. So next round, one Doom token on here. Uh, we don't advance the agenda. We're still way off that. Each investigator draws a card, so we know what this is. Oh, sorry, the dissonant voices should have gone. End of the round, that should have gone. Um, Mr. T would do well with all these necklaces. Yes, he, <laughs> Mr. C should be a character that can wear unlimited necklaces. Good 80s reference there. Um, oh, it's an icy ghoul. Surprise, surprise. Um, and again, because it has a spawn ability, it spawns in the cellar, not at the location where you drew the card. So that's fine, okay? It's a really tough monster, but it's in the cellar. And... Rotting remains, she has to do a willpower test. Willpower is five versus three. We're not going to boost it, because we don't need to. Let's see what we draw. And it's a minus two. So, yeah, we're okay. Five versus three with the minus two. That is discarded. No effect. Right, investigation phase. Again, this icy ghoul, because it doesn't have the hunter ability, it's just going to stay there. It's not going to do anything at all. The dissonant voices has gone, so we can start um, we can start playing these cards if we want to. But I think I might just investigate three times and get 
get all of these clues out. So yeah, first investigate, three versus one. Right, let's see how we get on. Three versus one, yep, that's fine, so we get a clue. Second action, investigate again. Uh, so there's a zero. So yeah, for those people watching, these counters don't come in little plastic things where you put them in here. A lot of people do actually, because otherwise the counters keep get the, the counters will get marked. Uh, they'll get damaged all the time. So you can buy these little. They're like for protecting coins for collectors um, from China. But anyway, so this is a tablet, okay? And a tablet is minus two. And if there is a ghoul enemy at lo your location, take one damage. Right. So it's minus two, which is still okay, and there is not a ghoul enemy at our location. So, we're fine. We have found all of the clues in the attic. Right, and that skids his three actions. He could spend two resources to take a fourth action, if we want to. Um, I don't think we do. So let's go on to Agnes. Now, Agnes does not want to go into the cellar on her own, because if she goes into the cellar, the ghoul will engage with her, and then in the enemy phase, the ghoul will attack her and deal lots of damage. So we don't want that to happen. So Agnes is probably just going to have a consolidation turn, playing stuff, drawing cards. Let's see what we've got. Uh... Oh! Okay. Forbidden knowledge, right. It's got four uses, and you can exhaust it and take one horror to move a token on here into your resource pool as a resource. Now, on its own, that seems okay. Well, actually, it seems quite weak, but because Agnes has an ability that triggers every time she takes a horror, we want her to take a horror, so that's quite good. So this is an asset, it goes into play, it costs zero, and it doesn't take up a slot. Um, it's a talent. Right, so it's not a spell, so we don't get to draw a card. Okay, so that's her first action done. Do we want to play the Holy Rosary in place of the Heirloom of Hyperborea? I don't know. Let's see if we can get any more spells first. Um, oh, we've got this. Since, since we've got plenty of actions, let's just play this. Emergency cash, or cash if you're listening in America. Cost zero, gain three resources. There you go, nice and easy. One, two, three. She's got loads of resources. And a third action, I think she's just going to draw a card. Shriveling, it's a spell. Right, excellent. So when she plays that, she's going to get to draw a card. And then we might look at replacing the um, So, both characters have had three actions. We now go to the enemy phase. There is an enemy, but because it doesn't have Hunter, it doesn't move. Right, next, upkeep phase. Uh, reset actions, ready exhausted cards. Oh, we should have used the scrying. Never mind. Draw a card. This is where, if we were playing with two players and somebody else was playing, they would have remembered to use the scrying, but I can't keep track of all of this at the same time. Um, oh, that's quite good. Just draw an evidence, which is quite a nice card. And baseball bat. Baseball bat and a resource as well. Loads of resources. Now, right, end of the round. How many cards have you got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's fine, because you've got a hand limit of eight. So, Mythos face for the next round. Add a Doom counter. Three. And let's draw a card. Now, we know what this is. It's the rats, isn't it? I think. Yes, Swarm of Rats. So, the Swarm of Rats engages with Skids, because Skids drew the card. And then we don't know what this one is. This is... Oh, brilliant. This is, we've been really lucky. So this is another of those obscuring fogs. It adds two to the shroud value of this location, which is absolutely fantastic because we no longer need to... We've already found all of the clues there, so that, that's just great. We were quite lucky there. Right, and now it's our turn. So we've got to deal with this swarm of rats first, but it, it, this, is, this is really easy because we've got a knife. So first action, we fight with the knife. We've got three, four, five... Five versus one, almost guaranteed. Ah, we've drawn the Elder Sign. Now, the Elder Sign, there's only one of them in the back, okay? But when the Elder Sign comes out, it's good. And every character has its own printed ability of what happens 
when the Elder Sign comes out, which is it, it's really, really nice. That all, all the characters are very different. And Skids, whenever the Elder Sign comes out, it's plus two, and if you succeed, gain two resources. So I'm three, four, five, six, seven, seven against one. I think I have succeeded. That is the Swarm of Rats dead, and gain two resources. Nice. Loads of resources. So that was the first action. Now, second action, there's nothing to do here. So he's going to move to the hallway. Third action, he could move to the cellar, but then he doesn't have any actions left to actually attack the ghoul. But I don't think we want to do that. So it's his third action. He's probably just going to uh, play a card. Yeah, let's play personal training. Personal training is a card that stays in, to, stays in play, and from now on, I can spend resources to get extra willpower or extra fight, and I have loads of resources. So that is going to be really good. Um, that does cost two to play, then, but that's fine. Two to play. Right, next. Agnes. Three things to do. We're going to do the spell. So we are going to spend three resources. To, ah, no, hang on a minute. I've just noticed. This has an arcane slot on it. Scrying also has an arcane slot on it. So if we were to play Shriveling, it would replace Scrying. So we don't want to do that yet. We might as well do first action, use the Scrying, use the last counter off it. Um, I don't think the card disappears when its charges have gone, because there are other cards in the game that allow you to recharge cards, I think. Um, like your gun, your gun's got bullets, you don't drop your gun when it runs out of bullets and there are certain cards which allow you to reload your gun. But in this case, the card is effectively useless and we'll replace it with shriveling. Anyway, first action, scrying. Let's look at the top three cards of the deck. We have a ghoul minion, ancient evils and crypt chill. Let's have a look. Now, ghoul minion is not too bad. Um, but we don't want to draw it next turn, or do we? If we draw it next turn, it'll arrive in the hallway. I'm, I'm thinking I want to go in here and get rid of this icy ghoul as soon as possible before it gets a turn. So that means I want um, as many actions as I can before I do that. And it has four health, so it's going to be quite tough to kill this. Um, yeah, Keith's saying the limit on your slots is, is one of everything except hands. You have two hands, so you can carry, but some things like the baseball bat is, uh, I think it's a two-handed item. It uses up both hands, I think. Um, anyway, I don't know where the baseball bat's gone. So yeah, what are we going to do with these cards? I don't think we want the ghoul minion just yet. And we want Agnes to have the crypt chill because it's a willpower test. So therefore... We're going to do that. So that's the first action done. Second action, Agnes is going to play Shriveling. So she's playing a spell. It ha it's an arcane slot, so she has to discard Scrying first. Because she played a spell, she draws a card. Okay. And sh Shriveling comes with four charges. Shriveling is a, a spell that you can cast on monsters, and it deals damage. So first action, second action, third action, she moves to the hallway, and that is the end of the investigation phase. So the enemy phase, again, it stays there. And then we have the upkeep phase, where both characters get a card and a resource. Right, so what's next? Next round, mythos phase, place a doom on the agenda. Draw cards, skids first, ancient evils. Place one Doom on the current agenda. This can cause the agenda to advance. Okay. So we now have five. Five out of seven. Um, and then Agnes draws Crypt Chill. She has to make a willpower test of four. And if she fails, discard one asset you control. If you cannot, take two damage. She does have three assets. And we weren't bothered about keeping the heirloom of Hyperborea anyway, so I'm not bothered if she fails. She might succeed. Uh, she's five versus four. She's not going to boost it, because as I say, it's not too bad. Oh, you also have two spell slots, do you? 
Oh, sorry. Yeah. Two arcane slots. Right, so I did that wrong. Apologies. That should stay in play. It's not going to do anything because it's out of charges. Um, yeah, I was looking at the wrong place in the rule book. There we go. Right. Where were we? Uh, five versus four. Ah, we're drawing the Elder Sign. The Elder Sign for her is plus one for each horror on Agnes Baker. She has three horror on her, so she gets plus three. So she's absolutely fine. No effect at all. Right. Now it's our go. So what we're going to do? Um, yeah, we're going to go in here and get rid of the Icy Ghoul. So skids first. First action, move to the cellar. Now, we haven't been to the cellar yet, so we have to flip the card over. Your cellar seems to have been replaced with an underground network of icy tunnels and caverns. The cold chills you to the core. So, again, going back to the things I like about the game, this is an icy ghoul. It spawns in the cellar. See, the theme is all there. It's an icy ghoul. Um, okay. After you enter the cellar, take one damage. Okay, right. Ouch. So we take a damage. It's fine. He's got eight health. And there are four clues on this location. So... There were four in the attic, there's four in the cellar, we only need six in total, so we don't have to get all of these. Uh, and now that enemy automatically engages with skids, I believe. So he's now engaged with the enemy, and so he's now limited on what he can do. But if he fights, that's absolutely fine. Which is what he's going to do. Now, can he kill it? I think I can, you know. I think I can. Question is, do I need to? Because Agnes hasn't had her go yet. I'd have to deal four damage to it, which means shooting it with a derringer, and, it, and it, if I succeed by two or more, I'll deal plus one damage, and then discarding the knife, really twisting it in, that will deal plus one damage as well, and that would be two attacks of two damage each, and that would get rid of the ghoul. But I would have to spend a lot to do so. And Agnes is going to come along with her shriveling spell. And her shriveling spell does plus one damage off the bat. She should have gone first. Yeah, she should have gone first and done this. Um, never mind. I've done it now. Um, ah, this is quite good. Play after you defeat an enemy. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, I think if Agnes defeats the enemy, I don't think I'm going to. No, I think that means I have to defeat the enemy to get that bonus. Never mind. Right. So he's got two actions left. And remember, if he does anything other than fight or evade, then he's going to get an attack of opportunity. Monsters haven't attacked yet. But what's printed here is what the monster does when it attacks you. So when this monster attacks, it deals two physical damage and one horror. Okay, so you don't want them to attack. You want to try and prevent that happening if you can. So yeah, let's fire the last remaining bullet. Okay, so what is our fight? It's three, four for the B-Cop, five, six for the Derringer, and the Icy Ghoul has a three fight. So we are plus three at the moment. Um... We could boost it by one because we've got physical training. So physical training, this is a fast ability. It doesn't cost an action to use. Spend a resource to get a plus one fight. So I think I will. I'm going to spend a resource. So I'm at plus four, I think. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven against three. Let's see what we got. Seven against three. It's a zero. So we've definitely succeeded by two or more. So we deal two damage to the ghoul. Okay, I think he's going to do it. Ah, but that would leave him vulnerable then because he doesn't then have... Because he's, he's, he's guns out of bullets and if he discards the knife... I mean, I do have a 45 automatic with four ammo. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so... His third action is going to discard the knife. So I do a fight with a plus two, and it deals one damage. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six against three is absolutely fine. What have we got? 
6 versus 3. It's a skull. What does a skull do? Skull. Minus x, where x is the number of ghouls at your location. There is one ghoul at our location, so that's minus 1. Absolutely fine. So if we were playing on the hard or expert level, that would have been minus 2. So yeah, so um, yeah, good job we're playing on easy. But that wouldn't have mattered. Right, so we've done two more damage to the ghoul, which kills it. Uh, now, Keith, if you're still listening, this card has a victory point value on it. Do I put it in the discard pile or do I put it separate? Victory points is basically how many experience points you'll get at the end of the scenario. And I have a feeling that any card with a victory point value on, when you kill it, it doesn't go to the discard pile. I have a feeling it goes into your victory pile where you will get experience points. Right, so, and now I can play this. This is an, is an event, it's a fast event, which means it doesn't cost an action to play. Spends one, play after you defeat an enemy, discover one clue at your location. So there we go. Oh, why, oh yeah, so he's got five clues now. We only need one more. Uh, right, okay, into the victory display. Yes, so separate, that goes there, fantastic. I thought so. All these rules are popping back into my head. It's now Agnes's go. Except, I think I'm going to do something. Um, I think we're doing okay, but Skids now doesn't have... Well, he's got a gun, but he's out of bullets. And I don't have enough resources to play that. So I think, yeah, I did have an option, but I'm not going to do it. So, Agnes, first action. She moves to the cellar which means she takes one damage. She can only take six, but that's okay for the moment. Right. Action two. Ah, now the shroud value of this location is four. So it's really, it's, oh wow, it's going to be really hard to find clues here. So this evidence card was discover a clue at your location. I didn't have to make any check whatsoever. So that was, that was a really good move. Um, what have we got here? We have another spell. Play when you draw a non-weakness treachery card. Okay, so I need to remember that, that I have a spell in hand that when I draw a non-weakness treachery card, I can play that spell and cancel it. Um, that's for evading. We've got the Holy Rosary. That's for evading. We've got the Dig Deep, which is pretty good. That boosts her willpower and her agility. Um, What's she going to do? Because her investigate is only two, and the shroud value here is four. So we're going into it with a minus two, which is really not good. Um, does she have anything that can boost it? Yeah, she's got unexpected courage. This has question marks on it. These are wild. So these can be used against any test. Um, and I've got that, which would be plus one. And I've got that, which could be one. Um, Skids will be at the same location. He doesn't have anything that can help her whatsoever. I mean, we are going to have to get at least one clue. So let's let's try it. Let's do an investigate. It's two versus four, so we're at minus two. But I'm going to play Unexpected Courage. And I think that's all I can... Well, no, I could play that as well. Let's play that as well. That's an extra one. Okay? So I'm a, I'm a plus one. Yeah, I'm five versus four. Because we only need one more. So five versus four. Skull. Minus X, where X is the number of ghouls at your location. No ghouls. Boom. It's a zero. So we have six clues now. Now I said earlier on that if this card, if the act card has an objective on it, then that overrides the rules on when you can spend the tokens. And this is... When the round ends, investigators in the hallway may, as a group, spend the requisite number of clues to advance. So, we have to be in the hallway at the end of the round in order to spend the clues for the barrier. And that makes sense because of the story that's going to proceed. Um, so, we can't do that. So, Agnes has got one action left. What's she going to do? One, two, three, four, five. Let's draw a card. It's a knife. Right. We are done. Enemy phase. There are no enemies. Water time. I'm interested to know, for those people that have played this scenario before, 
Am I doing okay? Am I making the right decisions? Is it an easy scenario? Um, how different does it play out the more times you play it? Um, I guess if you played this scenario like three or four times back to back with the same characters, you'd probably get bored. Um, but you know, playing different characters can be quite cool. So anyway, uh, we are now in the upkeep phase. Both characters get a card and a resource. Card and a resource. The reason I'm checking it is because it could be the weakness card. Um, because there is still two weaknesses in Skidzy's deck and there's one weakness in Agnes's deck. And bad stuff happens when that comes out. Uh, right, so it is now the next round. Mythos phase. One doom on the agenda. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. A card for skids. It's a ghoul minion. Okay. So speaking of flavour text, I said that you have to read the flavour text on these cards because that tells the story. I'm not reading the flavour text on the um, the monsters. You know, it, it adds to the flavour of, of the game, but you don't want to be reading the same thing every time it comes out. And that, that is not essential to the story. So Ghoul Minion engages with Skids and Ancient Evils. Right, now, this is a treachery card. It's a non-weakness treachery card. So, she could, Agnes could cast her Ward of Protection, which I think she's going to do because we don't want this. So it costs a one. Uh, play when you draw a non-weakness treachery card. Yep. Cancel that card's revelation effect. Yep. Then take one horror. Oh, never mind. Right, so she takes a horror. Yeah, because every time she casts spells, she's using, like, dark magic or whatever. But It's probably not dark magic, but, you know, using spells is not a normal thing. Um, drives anybody insane. Uh, and then because she played a spell, she draws a card. Ooh! Ooh, that's amazing. Uh, except we don't need it because we've got... Yeah, okay. Uh, this is an intro scenario. The difference later is a large amount of locations to visit. P.S. Doing well. Excellent. Right. What's next? That's those cards. We have a ghoul minion in play, which is not going to be a problem at all. I say that. We don't have our gun out yet. <laughs> we do, we still do, we still have the Derringer, but it hasn't, it hasn't got any bullets left. We have another gun in hand, we have the 45 automatic, which when we play it, we come with four bullets, but we're engaged with the monster. So if we do play this while engaged with the monster, we're going to get an attack of opportunity, which is not going to be that bad. We're going to take one damage and one horror, but that's fine, that's not going to kill us. Uh, what we do need to do is we need to get into the hallway at the end of the round. That's what we need to do. We can't just move out of the cellar because the monster's in there. If you move out of a location and there is an enemy engaged with you, it goes with you. Okay? So this is where the evade might come in. Because if we evade the monster, it basically returns to the location and it's exhausted. Which means we can then ignore it for the rest of this round and it's not going to attack us. We can then move out, and because it doesn't have Hunter, it won't come after us. And because it doesn't have any victory points on it, we are not, it, it's going to be no benefit to us at all to defeat this monster. So we might just want to evade it and, and run away. Um, and evading is you test your agility against its agility. Let's do that. Yeah, so you do have choices in this game. So we're going to try and evade. Uh, first action is evade. Evading doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity. Uh, our agility is four. Against two. We could boost it, but there's, there's no need to boost it. So it's four versus two. And we've drawn a zero, so it is evaded. So the monster is exhausted, and I believe placed at the location. And as soon as it readies, it will engage somebody at that location again. But for now, it's there. Second action, move to the hallway. Uh, and third action, I'm going to play the 45 automatic, which is another one hand item, so I can carry it around at the same time as my Derringer. There you go. And I'm going to put four tokens. I'm going to use these tokens, actually. Uh, right, so it's got four ammo on it. So we're ready. If another big monster comes out, uh, we've got a fully loaded 45 automatic. That's good. Right, next. Agnes. 
What's she gonna do? Oh, I forgot to put four secrets on there. Yeah, this has got four uses only. Um, so yeah, she could have done. She could do that to kill this monster, but as a, I don't think it's worth it. So let's not do that. Let's let's. Ah, now the other thing I was going to mention for those people who are watching, there are still two clues left in this location. We don't need them. Remember, we only need six clues. Um, to pro to progress this act, but. There is a victory point value on this card, and you will get the victory point value of every location in the game as long as you have removed all of the clues off it. I'm looking at the camera, and I'm looking at Rick and Keith to check that that's right. So there is a reason why we might want to remove these two clues from here. We don't need them for the scenario, but if we do remove them, I think we're going to get one extra experience point at the end of the scenario. And the card that we drew is the perfect card. For this, I think. Look what you look what I found. You play it after you fail the skill test, and you automatically discover two clues in your location. Brilliant. So that's what we're going to do. Agnes, as her first action, is going to investigate. It's two versus four. Oh, actually, if you fail a skill by two or less, so we want to fail it, but we don't want to fail it hard. Oh. So we kind of, what, what do we want to do here? We want to kind of get, we want to kind of get evens. I'm just looking at the token mix that's in the game. So the token mix in this scenario, if we go out on at evens, there is a five in 16 chance that we will succeed. So about a one in three chance that will succeed at evens. And we kind of don't want to succeed. We want to fail a little bit. There is a one, two, three, four, five. So there's a one in three chance we'll succeed. One in three chance we'll, f oh no, the skulls. Skulls, the two skulls are gonna count as zero. The cult is gonna count. Okay, so there's actually more, ch ah, right. I think we want to be at minus one. So how do I get one extra intellect? Um, okay, so I cannot boost my intellect by... What? No, I can. I've got Dig Deep. I was going to play this anyway. So, let's get this right. First action, play Dig Deep. Cost two. Right. Second action, I will investigate. And it's two versus four. But I am going to spend one resource to boost... Oh, no, 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 hang on. I'm, I'm misreading this. It's willpower and agility. Forget that. Undo, rewind. Right, anyway, back where we were. Uh, I need one extra intellect. Now, I can look at... Can Skids help? No. Skids can't help because he's at a different location. So, how do I get that one extra intellect? I can't. So, sorry, let's just, let's just do it anyway. First action, investigate. It's two versus four. Let's see what we get. Two versus four. Come on. It's a minus one. So we're one versus four. So we're at minus three. So we failed and we did not fail by two or less. So we can't play that card. So that was just a waste of an action. Let's do it again. Exactly the same. Second action. Do it again. And now, remember, there's a monster at this location, but because it's exhausted, we can ignore it. It's not going to do anything at all. So two against four. Two against four. Yes! Brilliant. So we failed by two. And because we failed by two, we can play this card, which costs two resources. Look what I found. Discover two clues at your location. Boom! Thank you very much. One extra XP at the end of the scenario. Right. Uh, third action. She moves to the hallway. We now do the enemy phase. The enemy uh, doesn't do anything. We then do the upkeep phase where the, ready, the enemy readies. And it would now engage with somebody who was at the cellar, but there's nobody there. Uh, both characters get a card and a resource. I'm getting very hungry. Um... Hard work, this. 
What else happens? That's it, snake round. Doom token. One, two, three, four. Right, we have seven doom tokens. But I'm. Ugh. Cards falling on the floor. Right. Okay. A feral beast, roughly humanoid, with a canine cast and hooves for feet, tears through the ground in front of you. Below the floor, you can see vast tunnels beneath your house. Fiendish howling echoes from deep within the underground caverns. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Okay. Then discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a ghoul enemy is discarded. The lead investigator draws that enemy. Okay, so we've done that. It's a ghoul, right. So the lead investigator, which is Skids, draws that enemy. It's a ghoul minion. It's in play. That goes. Next, we have the getting out. Now, this is the final agenda card. I think if the final agenda card progresses, then you lose. I think. But it's not going to because it's got ten on it. We're fine. Right, you hear a crazed howl outside, and suddenly all the creatures turn their attention to that sound. They rush to escape the house, breaking down doors and clawing at everything in their way. Oh, right, okay. So what's happening? Um, fourth, at the end of the enemy phase, each unengaged ghoul enemy moves one location towards the parlour, right? And also, at the end of the round, place one doom on this agenda for each ghoul enemy in the hallway or parlour. Right, so the ghouls are trying to get out. And the more of them that are trying to get out, oh, they're clawing at the door to get out, which is what the, ah, this is right, I see, yeah, I like this. Again, the mechanics are backing up the theme. Um, right, so what was that? That was the end of the round, wasn't it? Where am I up to? I completely had a brain fart and lost track of where we are. I put, no, no, it happened on the end of the round. Ah, this is the enemy phase. This is the upkeep phase. Is this the upkeep phase? I've lost track of what we were doing momentarily. Yeah, in fact, I think... Have I done this wrong? People watching? I think I have. I think I... I did the mythos phase for the next round before spending the six tokens. Yeah, so that shouldn't have happened yet. Yeah, I think that's what I've done. I've I, I, I've gone through to the next round and added a a doom token there, which was the seven, which agended it. Yeah, move on out. So yeah, I should have. So at the end of the round, the previous round, I would have spent six tokens. Let's spend four from here and two from here. I don't think it matters. Uh, so advance the act. Right. Oh. Using the barrel from the attic, you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier. The barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice, then hisses and fades out of existence. The barrier blocking the passage to the parlour has been vani has vanished. Reveal the parlour. Set, set aside Lita Chandler into play in the parlour and the ghoul priest in the hallway. So, yes, at the start of the scenario, there were two other cards that I set aside. Uh, Lita Chandler and the ghoul priest. Lita Chandler goes in the parlour. And the ghoul priest goes in the hallway where it automatically engages with somebody and it has prey, highest fight. So that engages with skids. Right, and then we have to read this and this and this because things have happened. A woman with a torch stands in your parlour. A glimmer of hatred in her eyes. What have you done to my barrier? She screams, furious. Before you can answer, a ghastly wall sounds... A ghastly wail... My eyesight's going... Sounds behind you, and a creature wearing robes and a deer skull mask tears through the wall, advancing towards you. Objective, if the ghoul priest is defeated, advance. So we do not have to find any more clues now to complete the scenario. We just have to defeat the ghoul priest, which is here. So the parlour. The parlour has a resign ability. We can do that if we are in the parlour. Okay? 
And also, there is another ability on the parlour that if Lita Chandler is not controlled by a player, which she, she is not, if we are in the par, uh, oh, she gains this ability, which is basically you talk to her and try and convince her to join you. But you can only do that if you are in the parlour. And she is in the parlour, and when she is controlled by a character, you get really good at fighting. Why do we need to be good at fighting? Well, we have just met the Ghoul Priest, right? And the Ghoul Priest has four fights, but it has ten health, because it has five per player. Two player game, ten health. And it does two damage and two horror when it attacks you. So this is going to be a very tough monster to defeat. But having control of Lita will help. So that's what happened at the end of the round. Then at the start of the next round, we did that thing and this arrived. Um, so yeah, we are now up to date. It's all good. We're not going to go to the attic and the cellar again. And this ghoul minion doesn't have hunter. So I'm just going to move these to one side for now. So we've got the hallway where we are and we have the parlor where Lita is. Keep dropping cards on the floor. Right, now, oh, oh, what was I going to explain? There was something that I had in my mind I was going to explain. Oh yeah, yeah. One thing I love about this game, and I've already said that I love a lot of things about this game, but one of the things that I love is this isn't a game where you play a scenario and then you either win or lose, and if you lose you then start again. This scenario has multiple ways that it ends, and no matter in which way it ends, you then proceed to the second scenario of the campaign. Uh, Rick's saying the ghoul in the attic will move as the agenda. Oh yeah, you're right, yeah, thank you for that. The attic, yeah, the forced ability of the attic will cause the ghouls to move. So that ghoul up there in the cellar uh, will move when forced to banish. Uh, no, yeah, it's in, it's, in the, it's in the cellar. The cellar is the basement, yeah. Um, Right, so anyway, what I was saying is the scenario can end in multiple ways and if you're fighting a losing battle and it's going really badly and you're going to die, you have options. You don't have to just go, oh, well, we'll just, you know, try our best and kill ourselves in the process. No, you don't have to do that. You can run away and that will lead to a different scenario outcome next time. It's really cool. The story progresses in multiple different ways depending on the choices that you make. And if we want to, if we get into the parlour, we can run away if it gets too tough for us. And I think I played one game where I did exactly that. One character died and the other one decided to run away because they were just going to die as well. It's not a great outcome. Obviously, we want to kill the ghoul priest. That's what we want to do. But if we don't, we do have other options. Right. We did the mythos phase. It's now the investigation phase. Our objective now is to kill the ghoul priest. But the ghoul priest has 10 health. That means we're going to have to shoot it and hit it and stab it loads of times. Having control of Lita will really help because when Lita is controlled by a player, each investigator at her location uh, gets plus one fight. And when an investigator at your location successfully attacks a monster, they deal an extra one damage. So every time we attack it, we're going to deal one damage. We really want to have control of Lita before we start attacking the enemies. Now, we are in the, we're in a good position here because there's two enemies here. They are both engaged with skids, which means Agnes is free to go off and do other stuff and do what she wants. In other words, she can go into the parlour and try and convince Lita to join us. And the way you do that is with a parlay test which is an intellect test. Unfortunately, her intellect is not very good. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Her intellect is two. Do we have any way of boosting it? No, we do not. Right. Unfortunately, the two characters that I've chosen, um, they're not... This one's got... Skids has got three intellect, and Agnes has got two, and intellect seems to be a very important skill. Anyway, we're doing, we're doing okay. Um, so she can get more resources. We don't need them. She can fight. Okay, so she could fight. See, I'm thinking we do want Lita with us. Um, Rick and Keith, if you're still watching, or anybody else who's watching, 
is is controlling Lita absolutely essential to defeating this scenario? Because based on what I've got here, with Skids having a 44, 45 automatic, with Agnes having a shriveling spell which deals two damage, and if she takes a horror, she can put damage on creatures. I think we're okay not having control of Lita. I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, let's let's do it because to get control of Lita, we need to do a parlay test. Parlay uses intellect. Her intellect is two, and I have no way of boosting it. So I I think that's not going to work. And I mentioned about the evading as well. We might want to um, skids might want to just evade because if he does, it's exhausted. It's absolutely fine. We don't we don't suffer any penalties. Um, now this ghoul priest does have a retaliate ability. Uh, which is if, if I ever do something to this priest and it fails, then I get attacked back. So, yeah, we don't want to do that. Let's just have a look at the cards that we've got. Um, this would be useful because Shriveling uses... Int yeah, yeah, we need, we're going to need to do that. Baseball bar, Survival Instincts, Holy Rosary. Yeah, this is all good. Right, so let's... Let's do this because we do have five resources. I'm going to play Dig Deep first. I'm going to play Dig Deep. That costs two. Uh, not essential. We beat it both ways. Ah, okay, right, yeah. In the in the games I've previously played, and certainly the one on Friday, they needed Lita, um, you know, because it had 15 health. They were playing three players, 15 health, and they were only doing one damage at a time. Uh, maybe two, but yeah, they, I think they needed Lita. Um, Right, so first action was play Dig Deep. Second action, do we want to play the Holy Rosary and get rid of the Heirloom of Hyperborea? Hmm. Right, what's our intellect at the moment? Five, we can boost it by that. This is going to be a permanent plus one. No, let... Did we need the Dig Deep? No, we didn't. Right, undo that. I'm not going to play the Dig Deep. Instead... I'm going to spend that too to play the Holy Rosary. And because it's a necklace slot, I have to discard the heirloom of Hyperborea. That's fine. Our intellect is now six. What was that? First action? Yeah, I think that was her first action. Second action, she's going to attack the ghoul priest. But she's not going to just fight it with a bare hand. She's going to use her shriveling spell. So she uses one charge of her shriveling spell. Uh, spend one charge, fight. This attack uses willpower instead of fight. Now, I'm going to ask Keith a question here. Uh, I, I asked this to Rick on Friday, and he gave me the answer, which was a BGG thread. But I haven't read anything official about it. <clears throat> so this is, and I can't find answers. I've been Googling this, and I can't find definitive answers. But we're doing a fight test, right? Fight test normally uses the, the combat skill. She's using the, not the square, she's using the shriveling, which means that this attack uses willpower instead of fight. But what about the committing of cards to boost the skill? Is it willpower or is it fight? Because it's a fight test, but she's using willpower instead of her combat skill. Um, so yeah, I, I want to know, and, and even if you give me the answer, can you let me know where the official answer is that in the rule book or the FAQ? Or something because I can't can't seem to find it anywhere. Um, anyway, right. So she's done that. So it's six, five, six because of the Holy Rosary. So six against four. So she's not going to commit any cards to it. So it's will. Yeah, I, I thought it was, but as I, I want to know where in the rules it says that um, because the only rules I can find is that you can you can commit cards that match the skill test. Okay, yeah, that says it uses willpower instead of fight, so then it becomes a will test rather than a fight test. Okay, fight and combat are different. Yeah, I think the, the closed fist is combat, isn't it? Yeah, sorry, combat. Fight is the action, that's it. Anyway, we are six willpower against four combat. Minus one, it's fine. So we succeeded, and it deals plus one damage. So that deals two damage to the ghoul priest. Um, 
Third action, we'll do it again. Yeah, we'll cast another shriveling spell. Okay, here we go again. Six against four. Minus two, we're okay. So that's another two damage. So the ghoul priest has taken four, and that is Agnes Dunn. So it's Skid's go. Now Skid's could just fire, he could just have three actions and just fire three bullets. I think I, think I might do that, because that's the 10, and then he's dead. So first action, he's gonna to choose to shoot the bullet, which counts as a fight action. Uh, so he's got three, four. Oh, he's only got five. Time to commit some cards. Um, okay, I'll I'll do that. I'll play overpower, which gives me two combat icons. So I'm seven versus four. Seven versus four. Plus one, so we succeeded, and because I was succeeded, I draw a card. There we go. I was gonna say, I hope this isn't my weakness card. Um, so that's two damage, because it's a bullet. So that's two damage. His second action, fire another bullet. And this time, uh, we will throw away, sorry, we'll commit this card to the test, which is uh, one, so that's six. Six versus four. Yep, we're okay. So another two. And then finally we'll shoot another bullet. It's a really good job. I played that gun beforehand. Oh, um, and I'm going to commit that card, which has got a combat and an agility. This is a combat test, so the agility is ignored. Again, six versus two. And we have another minus one. Ten damage. Easy peasy. Ghoul Priest is dead. Which means this act advances. Okay. When the robed creature falls, the fiendish swarm burrows back into the ground and the chaos of the house quiets. But the stranger in your parlour doesn't seem relieved. So, did we do that before they even had a turn? Yeah, I did. Cool. Right. You broke my seal that was set to trap the ghouls within. She raises her torch. Now we must take more direct measures and burn this help it to the ground. The lead investigator must decide. Choose one. It was never much of a home. Burn it down. Or this help it is my home. No way are we burning it. So at the end of the scenario, we have a decision to make. That decision is actually going to impact on the rest of the campaign. Um because it's our home, you need to make a decision. She's obviously saying that um, this home is a hell pit and it's the source of a ghoul spawning out of the ground and she created a barrier that would keep them back. Um, that barrier unfortunately locked us in our study uh, and we managed to escape, but by escaping, we've broken her barrier. Uh, and yeah, so she's now saying we need to burn it down. So. This isn't a role-playing game, but it has a little bit of a flavour of a role-playing game in that the lead investigator must now make a decision about whether he's going to burn the house down or not. And having played through this campaign, uh, I, I know what happens if you do and I know what happens if you don't. And it does lead the adventure down a, um, a different path. Um, and sometimes, uh, I know one thing that Mark said to me, is he said, you'll, you'll make a decision in scenario one and you'll write something down on a bit of paper to say, oh yeah, we, we burnt our house down. And then it won't have any effect on the campaign at all until about three scenarios later where it was like, oh, did you burn your house down? Oh, well, that box of, you know, raffle tickets that you had in the cellar, well, I'm sorry, you've lost it. Um, so yeah, it might not be immediately apparent uh, what that actually does. Anyway, I'm not gonna say what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave that, um, but that is it. That is the end of the scenario. So what happens is we will go through the victory point pile, uh, which is this, the monsters we defeated, and all of the locations that we removed, locations worth victory points that we removed things from. Um, and then based on whether we choose to burn the house down or not, 
we will reveal from the campaign guide, you will reveal, uh, you will read the do not read until the end of the scenario. Okay, you will read uh, whichever, whichever ending you have. And then we will get to spend experience points. I think you get two experience points for this scenario, plus, so one for that, one for that, two for that, and one for that. So we get seven experience points to spend to improve your character by buying better cards and putting them in your deck. Anyway, there you go. Uh, I have no idea how long that took. Uh, the game does take longer than I think every time I play, but of course I was explaining rules, I was talking you through it. Um, you would probably play this scenario yourself in about 45 minutes to an hour if, if you were playing quick. But it is the initial scenario. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching. That's it for now. Um, content like this is only made possible through my Patreon campaign. So if you are interested in supporting the show uh, and you are not already a Patreon supporter, then please head over to patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Um, I quite enjoy doing this. So this gives me more incentive to start making even more Patreon content. Um, but I think I will need some better equipment. I'm obviously going to need to upgrade my broadband speed, uh, which I will do as soon as I get fiber broadband. I'm going to need a new tripod so I can get a proper top-down look on the cards. Um, I'm going to need some other webcams. I'm going to need some extra stuff to do it. But um, I have enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed watching if you've been watching live. Um, or if you're watching it back, because this YouTube is going to go, this video is going to go, it's going to go live on YouTube. Thank you very much, Keith and Rick, for watching. I don't know how many other people have been here. Um, and I hope it was fun to watch. I mean, both of you have played this game lots, it sounds. Um, so, yeah, I hope it was fun to watch, watching some uh, noob go through it. Um, and I don't think I made any mistakes in the end. I mean, I would have done if it weren't for Keith and Rick helping me out. Um, as I said, I still would like to get an official response on what icons you can commit to a test if you change the nature of that test. If you can point me at that, that would be, that would be great. But anyway, I'm going to wrap things up now. I'm really hungry. I need to lie down. I'll say good night. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, take care and I'll see you next time. And now I need to try and find out how to stop streaming, which I think is this button here. So until next time, see you later.